Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to my what have I read during this summer video, aka my May till July wrap up. Let's just get right into all of the seven books that I have read during these past couple of months. We're going to start off with a book that is so popular that I have already read five years ago, but that I really wanted to give a reread. And that was A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass. This year, I truly, really want to push myself and finish some of the series that I actually started years and years ago. And like I said, I read Akamath when it first came out. And did I enjoy A Court of Mist and Fury? I have very mixed opinions on this book. Back in the day, I gave it five out of five stars. And right now I would give it Three. I truly feel that I can like both see why people give this book a five out of five star rating, but also why people give it a one out of five stars. I mean, Akatar is a Beauty and the Beast retelling within like a fantasy world. I'm pretty sure you all kind of like know what Akatar is about and this whole series. Without giving away too many spoilers, I just thought that Feyre and Reese could be really cringe worthy in Akamath. What I did love is kind of like the whole group that they're like working with. I really like Kaz and Ezreal, Morgan as well. I just really like that kind of found family feeling. But some of the conversations and just the interactions between the people felt cringe worthy. <laughs> and for how big this book is, it's I believe like around 600 and something pages. Nothing much happens to be honest, but I still haven't picked up A Court of Wings and Ruin to continue on with this series and like finally finish it. This one is like seven to 800 pages. And the only thing that's gonna like get me through this book is the audiobook because that's what also happened with A Court of Mist and Fury to me. <laughs> and maybe if you wanna hear my, I think semi-controversial opinions, let me know in the comments down below. Then I will just like record a separate reading vlog for finishing the Akatar trilogy. I also became obsessed with Beach Read by Emily Henry and I immediately bought and binge read her other two books, You and Me on Vacation or The People We Meet on Vacation and Book Lovers. Oh my gosh, am I an Emily Henry stan right now? As you'll probably know, I am not like the biggest romance reader. It's just not my favorite type of genre. I'm not a huge fan of Colleen Hoover, things like Sarah J Mass. It's also not really my cup of tea. So I'm always really like where about romance and like the whole genre. But Emily Henry writes them in such an amazing way. Like they do not only have some really great romance elements in them, they also have a little bit of a deeper plot line and the main characters and side characters always struggle with some really serious problems that are being dealt with in such a good way, which I, in my opinion, is something that I miss in, for instance, Colleen Hoover's novels. I first read You and Me on Vacation, which is a friends to lovers romance, which if worked out properly, which I think Emily Henry nailed it in this book, is something that I absolutely adore. Just like, I don't sometimes get the enemies to lovers trope, but the friends to lovers, like I said, if worked out properly is chef's kiss. So Poppy and Alex are really great friends and they spent most of their summers, maybe all of them together. But two years ago, something happened and they don't really talk about that thing anymore. They haven't really talked ever since. So you are kind of like clueless about what happened there. So you jump between flashbacks from all the previous summers that they endured together and you kind of like get to know their backstory. And you also follow them in the now because they have decided to just go on one last summer trip, which will be their like last possibility to possibly realize are they friends or are they more than just that? I know that this is, I think most people's least favorite Emily Henry, but I just loved how their like friends to lovers situation was worked out and it made me feel so emotional and I just adored it. And then immediately after I read Book Lovers, which is Emily Henry's latest release, and I think it was a little bit of a mistake to read these books like back to back because I like having something in between as well. But in this one, we follow Nora, our main character, and she is a cutthroat literary agent. She's a workaholic and she's had this like not so great first impression slash experience with Charlie, who is also an editor. So they're both like into the publishing industry. Nora's sister persuades Nora to actually like go to the super cutesy town. I don't know what it was called again. Oh yeah, it was called Sunshine Falls. And she kind of like challenges Nora to just go on a one month holiday to not really work at all and just kind of live her life. And she meets Charlie 
at Sunshine Falls. And this feels so much like a small town romance, which I love that vibe. It feels just really, really summery. But the thing is that I think I enjoyed Book Lovers the least out of the three Emily Henry romance novels that are out right now. And that is because Nora was such a workaholic and I just don't like relate to that. I do really enjoy working and feeling like I have a purpose in this life, but being like completely obsessed with work is just not it for me. So her obsession with that kind of made me enjoy it a little less. But like I said, I also feel like I should have taken a little break from Emily Henry after reading You and Me on Vacation, which I didn't. But I do love Charlie and just ugh, Emily Henry, she has just such a way with writing romance and personal struggles that is just it for me. So she is right now an auto buy author for me. I know that she has written like other books in different genres as well, like more like magical realism. I don't know if I'm interested in picking those up, but her romances, Honey, sign me up for them. In preparation for Yalk, the young adult literature convention, I made like a really fun vlog for Yalk. So please go check that out if you haven't. I wanted to read a couple of books by authors who would go to the event. In the end, I only got my book signed by one of them <laughs> because Yalk was just like an organizational, or how'd you call that? It was just a disaster with the organization. That's what I'm trying to say. But I did decide to pick up Scythe by Neil Schusterman, a super popular dystopian trilogy. I'm pretty sure the majority of you guys know what it is about, but in this world, humanity has kind of like outplayed mortality. People are all immortal, but there are sites who decide who needs to die and who doesn't because you know, the population does need to stay in control a little bit. And in this one, we follow Citra and Rowan. They are gonna be apprentice sites, but only one of them will actually become one. And when that happens, the other one will have to glean the non scythe. I hope I'm explaining that correctly and clearly. Throughout this whole book, you kind of like get to know the world of the scythes and how corrupt it actually is. This whole idea of people being immortal brought so many fun, interesting facts that just truly fascinated me. For instance, your grandma could have three husbands and she could get a new child, which would then be like your aunt or your uncle, and they'd be younger than you. Like how fascinating is that? What else can I say about it? It's just really a great analysis, I think on how society is right now as well. And I also loved how action packed this was. There were a ton of like plot twists. It was definitely also really violent, but I do love reading about violent stuff in fiction, okay? Not in real life. So I believe I gave this one a four and a half out of five stars just because it surprised me so much. And I'm just like so dumb for not having picked this book up sooner. That's me with every single book that I read. I also forgot to give star rating to these two. I say You and Me on Vacation five stars and Book Lovers a four and a half. So now you also know my rating on those. Another book that I wanted to read before Yelk happened was Clean by Juno Dawson. This cover is like so shiny, so I'm sorry if I'm blinding you. This is Juno Dawson's contemporary novel about our main character, Lexi Volkov, who almost overdoses and then has to go to rehab. And she meets so many people there. You follow her whole journey in this rehab. But one of her inmates, Brady, actually intrigues her the most and they kind of like make a connection. Juno Dawson is one of my favorite authors, if not my ultimate favorite author. And if you haven't been here for a little while already on my channel, now you know. <laughs> she writes just such raw contemporary novels that are just so realistic and you just want to like shake the characters and be like, why are you making these decisions? Why are you seeing this stupid stuff? But it's that reality and that rawness that I just really appreciate in her novels. And Clean was no exception. I think my favorite novel of her, I have it right here, is actually Meat Market, which is an analysis on like the whole modeling industry and body image, stuff like that. Sorry, my battery died, but I would highly, highly recommend these two books if you're into raw contemporary stories that deal with definitely some triggering subjects. So you should definitely look up the trigger warnings before going into these because there are a ton. So for me, Clean was definitely a five out of five star novel. So we have two more books to go. And the next one that I picked up was The Stationery Shop by Marjan Kamali, if I'm pronouncing her name correctly. I don't know why, but this book has been recommended to me 
quite a lot because I love The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and The Vanishing Half. And just like a lot of people were like, if you want the same emotional vibes, you absolutely have to pick up this one. Roya, a dreamy, idealistic teenager living amid the political upheaval of 1953 Tehran, finds a literary oasis in kindly Mr. Fahri's neighborhood stationery shop. Then Mr. Fahri, with a keen instinct for a budding romance, introduces her to his favorite customer. Handsome Bachman, who has a burning passion for justice and a love for Rumi's poetry, and Roya loses her heart at once. Their relationship blossoms, and the little stationery shop remains their favorite place in all of Tehran. A few short months later, on the eve of their marriage, Roya agrees to meet Bachman at the town square, but suddenly violence erupts, a result of the coup that forever changes their country's future. In the chaos, Bachman never shows. For weeks, Roya tries desperately to contact him, but her efforts are fruitless. Reluctantly, she moves on to college in California, to another man, to a life in New England. Until a chance encounter nearly 60 years later gives her the opportunity to ask him the questions that have haunted her for more than half a century. Why did you leave? Where did you go? And how is it that you were able to forget me? So this is definitely a story about long lost romance and relationships. Coming to terms with that, also immigration is a big part of this story. Iranian culture, Iranian cuisine, and political talk about what happened in Tehran in Iran back in the 1950s. The thing with this book is I really enjoyed it when I was reading it. I also listened to the audiobook, which I would highly recommend. But when I like left this book on my side table, didn't pick it up for a while, I wasn't thinking about it. And that is maybe because the writing for this book was a little bit too slow for me, but it was written in such a beautiful way. And there are so many amazing quotes in here. It is definitely a heartbreaking story. And I can see why so many people cry at the end of this book and just feel extremely emotional. So I definitely recognize that this is for many, many people a five-star read, but I just didn't have that spark with this book, despite how beautiful this whole story was and how heartbreaking and frustrating certain characters were. So in the end, I gave this one a three and a half out of five stars, but if you like a little bit slower emotional stories, definitely give The Stationery Shop a go. I feel like this will be a lot of people's favorite read. And then I read my most anticipated release of 2022 because I received an ARC from Pan Macmillan. So thank you so much for sending me an ARC, Pan Macmillan. And that is Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. I'm slowly but surely getting more into psychological thrillers and murder mysteries. And last year I absolutely adored Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. If you're into like a creepy house in the middle of a winter setting, you absolutely need to pick this one up. And this book freaked me out. Every single chapter it ended kind of like on a cliffhanger. It just kept me wanting to read this book and I adored the twists and everything in this one. So I would highly recommend Rock, Paper, Scissors, but Daisy Darker, not so much. <laughs> the premise of this book is absolutely fantastic. The Daisy Darker family is an absolutely dysfunctional family, 10 out of 10 to the max. So if you enjoy reading about dysfunctional families, absolutely give this one a go. But Daisy Darker's grandma is about to turn 80 and she's always had this like feeling that she would die on her 80th birthday. So her grandma invites the whole family to this like secluded island where they own like a house. I believe it was like at a coastal island around Cornwall, if I'm correct. So it has that creepy separated island from the mainland tropish feeling. And she will like talk to the family about their future, about what is written down in her will. And then grandma actually turns up dead on her 80th birthday with like a little note, a little weird, strange poem next to it. And someone is coming for the whole darker family. But the thing is, because this island is like secluded from the mainland and there is this huge tide coming in, the island will be cut off from any people whatsoever for the next couple of eight hours. And it's kind of like a haunted mansion type of novel. And that sounded just absolutely amazing. But from very early on, I picked up on some clues as to what like the giant plot twist might be. And when it was revealed to me, 
it just didn't blow me away. I also just had some problems with that plot twist. I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm not gonna like tell you what it was or give you any hints or clues. So yeah, I was just a little bit disappointed because Alice Feeney, she got me fooled in this one. So I was hoping that she would be able to do the same with me in Daisy Darker, but she just wasn't. And I feel like it was a little bit too obvious. It was very interesting to read about this whole dysfunctional family, but it was just so dysfunctional that it felt a little bit over the top. So I gave Daisy Darker a three out of five stars and I am a little sad that I didn't enjoy this one as much as Rock, Paper, Scissors. But I definitely want to read more Alice Feeney, so I still feel like she could become a favorite thriller author. So yeah, those were the seven books that I have read over the past two to three months. So now I only want to share with you guys what I'm currently reading, and I'm so proud of myself because I am so bad with finishing series, as you all know, and I picked up Thunderhead by Neil Shusterman, the sequel to Scythe. I have voluntarily picked up a sequel within three months after picking up the first book. Like I am so proud of myself. It is also a lot thicker than Scythe. I feel like this one is over 500 pages and I don't want to tell you what it's about because spoilers for Scythe, but do know that I am definitely enjoying it. I've heard very mixed opinions. Some of my friends have told me like, just stop reading after Scythe because you could basically read that book as a standalone if you want. So if you don't want to commit to reading the whole trilogy, you'd be good to just breathe Scythe. But I was just really curious to see where Neil Schusterman was gonna like take this series. And I'm pleasantly surprised until so far. So I haven't picked up The Toll, which is the third book in this trilogy yet, because maybe I'm not gonna enjoy the ending of book two. And then I will just like, let the series be for what it is. But I have a feeling that this is gonna become one of my new favorite trilogies, dystopian stories. So having a great time until so far. So yeah, these are all the books that I have read in the past three-ish months. Please let me know in the comments down below which one of these books you have read, or maybe I have convinced you to pick one of them up. And if you have watched the video until the end, please comment down this emoji because I love you for being here and sticking with me throughout this super talkative video. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.